everyone and welcome back to another Make It Monday video. I've got my sketch already prepared for a birthday card that I want to make. This is going to be a shaker card using tool instead of acetate to create that shaker window. An idea that I got from the very fabulous Jennifer Maguire. Um, so let's get into it. I'm using a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock and the reverse polka dot background stamp from Simon Says Stamp to create my background. Inking that up in Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink. They're just my go-to inks now. Um, I, I don't even think I've got any dye inks left. I've now just got either the Distress dye inks, which I've got a few colours in, but I tend to go now just straight to my oxides. They stamp really well. They do stay wet longer, so you just have to bear that in mind um, you'll see now see how sort of very very wet that is so that just goes to one side to dry and then I can move on to the rest of my stamping this is a stamp set from clearly besotted called English Rose I bought this while I was on maternity leave I was laid up for the last few months of my maternity leave so I haven't actually crafted for many many months but I could still buy craft supplies and I bought quite a few and now I'm just working my way through them. So again, back with the Distress Oxides, I'm using three tones because these are a three stamp image. So you start off with your base layer and I'm doing this in my lightest pink of choice, which is Tattered Rose. Then you have the second stamp, which then gives you a bit more detail, in this case, the roses of the petals. And I'm doing this one in worn lipstick. And you can see the difference in definition. And then this final one is Abandoned Coral. And you then have the three different colours. And it's just stunning. It's, it's stunning images that look incredibly coloured with very, very minimal effort. Now moving on to the leaves. And again, this is the same concept. You have three stamps and three different ink colours. I'm doing these ones in Twisted Citron, Bundled Sage and Peeled Paint. And I'm doing, I'm probably going to end up doing more than I need, but I just would rather have extra than not enough when it comes to assembling my card. I did extra of the rose as well. I just didn't end up recording that little bit. You can see that the, the base layer didn't actually stamp perfectly well, but that's fine because their leaves, they have a variegated colour and texture and to me that just sort of makes it feel a little bit more realistic. So this is my second layer going in with the bundled sage. The advantage of using the Misty is that I don't have to keep changing the position of my stamps. I just put my card in and I can stamp multiples of the same image with very little fuss and very little effort, really, which is, it just takes the guesswork out of crafting, which is nice. Cleaning off my stamps, I don't use a stamp cleaner. I just spray it with a bit of water from my dist distress sprayer and give them a rub with a microfiber cloth. I used to use wet wipes, but I just found that they kept leaving tiny little fibres and you'd go and try and stamp your image and you'd just, the fibre would be stuck to the, the stamp and it wouldn't ink up in those areas. So I use I have a couple of microfiber cloths and when they get too grubby they just go through the wash and I'm good to go with another one. Nice and healthy for the environment. Right, I'm on the last stamping here and then we're going to move over to my die cutting. This glitter paper, it's more of a fabric than a paper. I've had it in my stash for forever. It comes from Paper Mania, I think it is. Um, I've run that through my big shop using the Lawn Fawn Stitch Circle frame dies and that's going to be my frame go on to my the front of my card um, next up I'm doing a sentiment I wanted to have a gold 
sentiment on this card to match him with the gold of the glitter frame that I'm using. Only the only gold embossing powder I've got is just a little bit too sparkly. It, it looked too, it just didn't match properly. So what I'm doing is I'm using the deco foil toner sheets and I've stuck on some stick it on the back of those. And then I've got the deco foil foil in champagne. And that's a much better color match for what I'm looking for. So I am just going to cover the, <coughs> excuse me. I'm putting the foil on top of the toner sheet and I'm going to run that through my laminator and that will give me a sheet of foiled um, paper then. My laminator, as you can see, is just from Amazon an Amazon Basics one. It does the job. And it was fairly inexpensive. I think it was only about 13, 13 pounds. Obviously there are purposefully designed laminators that you can use these foils with and they probably do a, a better job, but this works for me. So there you go. I've got my sheet of foiled cardstock. So now I need to die cut my sentiment. I knew I was making a birthday card, so happy birthday was the sentiment, but I couldn't decide between my Simon Says Stamp one or the MFT brushstroke birthday greetings. The Simon Says Stamp one is lovely, but it is very, very fine. The brushstroke one's just got a slightly thicker font to it. Um, because I had some space left on the foil, I decided to cut a series of hearts and stars, I cannot remember. I think they're Simon's, I think they're Simon's says stamp. I will put the the uh, supplies in the box below, so I will double check on that one. So now on to my favorite things again, this is Blueprints 13, this was the first Blueprint set that I bought and I really liked the frame that it came with it. It cuts just short of a, an A2 card so it leaves a nice thin border around your base card. So I'm cutting out my card panel then I'm find I have to find a circle die that will fit well for my frame. So I've got the Simon Says Stamp nested circles die. Found the one that works and then I'm just positioning that one onto the card base. I'm going to run them all through together. A bit of washi tape to stick it on. I find washi tape works quite well, but I still don't stick it over the actual card that I'm planning to use, just in case it sticks and damages it, and then I have to start all over again, and I don't particularly want to. This bit here, I'm covering the back of my card panel in score tape. This is the part that's going to become a shaker. So I want a really liberal covering of tape on here. My thick one was too thick, so I went for my slightly thinner one to cover the that top and side. Clearly I didn't put the circle square in the middle. Peel off all the backing tape. Zoe's joining in with the commentary. She's probably more fun than I am. Right, this is the tool. Um, I just bought this. I think it was um, it was either Amazon or eBay, and it was. She's competing with me. It was a couple of pounds for a, a whole entire row. So I've stuck that onto the sticky tape <laughs> and I'm now putting the sequins in. I've got a mix of these pink ones that I picked up at a, a craft event many, many years ago. And then I've got some pearl, what do they call them? 
I don't know, pearl things. But they've got a flat back, so you can normally stick them to a card. I've actually put them upside down, hoping that they don't flip over. Then, for a little bit of contrast in colour, I've put a darker pink in the mix as well. Getting rid of any strays. And then, squidge on the second bit of tool. So I'm sandwiching all my sequins, all my sequins between two pieces of tool. It's not quite the technique that uh, Jennifer Maguire uses. But I couldn't quite remember what she did. I watched the video, bought the tool and thought, oh, that'd be a good idea. Um, and then, as with all great ideas, never actually went and did it. But I like the softness that the tool gives over the acetate. So I thought I'd give it a go for this card and it makes, to me, it just works with the roses and the soft sort of pastel -y feel of the card. I just find shaker cards really fiddly and it's probably because I don't make very many of them. Oh, she's funny. Are you trying to commentate? Are you doing a better job than mummy? She's not very good at it really, is she? Hopefully we'll get better with more videos. Right, so I've put more tape on. I didn't feel like the stuff that was on there was sticky anymore after my mitts had been poking around all over it so I'm just peeling off that release tape once again ready to stick this card down onto my base card which is a piece of Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock which I <laughs> Yeah, you little minx, which I've cut to make a top folding A2 size card. I gave up trying to make um, cards that are half A4 because all of the dies and everything all fit the American A A2 size card. So I just I just go with that now. Sticking that piece of gold on the front of the card and now here I come to try and decide which of the two sentiments that I wanted to use. It was also at this point that I remembered that I wanted to put some of those uh, gold hearts inside the shaker and totally forgot to do that so those pieces will all get put back into the envelope with the dies to be used on another project another day. I thought they'd look quite nice inside, but never mind. So there I've got the the one on the card at the moment is the MFT brush strokes, and the one I'm just sort of getting rid of all the waste pieces in the middle is the Simon Says Stamp Happy Birthday. But it, it doesn't seem to jump out very well on the card because of that polka dot background it sort of needed something bolder but then I realized that the MFT one was a bit too large and bold and therefore didn't work on the front of the card either so we're sticking it on the inside now. Now I'm going to die cut the roses I have the coordinating die set from Clearly Besotted. I really like Clearly Besotted as a company because they're in the UK you don't get many UK companies the majority of the ones that I like do happen to be American and I have to find places that I can purchase those Simon Seb's stamp is only available in the UK and I don't have a great deal of theirs purely because with shipping charges and the the risk of getting custom charges as well I don't always I don't order I will save up and I'll do a big order every so often but um, for my American-based oh, American based stamps, MFT, Lawn Fawn, that sort of thing, I tend to go to Seven Hills Crafts. Um, I've been buying from them for 
good number of years now and they're, they're a fabulous service. But I discovered Clearly Besotted whilst on maternity leave and watching a lot of videos on YouTube for crafting. So I do now own a few of their stamps, including this one. So here I am just messing about with the flowers and the leaves, trying to decide what sort of order, what layout I like. This can take a couple of minutes, this bit. But you've got to get it right, haven't you? There we go, finally settled on just two roses, so the other ones will go away for another project. And then I'm using Ranger Multi Matte Medium just to stick those to the front of the card base. And my trusty tweezers so that my big fingers don't get in the way. I'm quite chuffed with this card actually, it came together, came together quite nicely. I'm using an acrylic block just to hold down those die cuts. It's a slightly raised, bumpy surface that I'm putting them on. So they need a little extra help. So I'm still trying to figure out if I can fit that on the front and it's it's not gonna happen. So I've given up and I've decided to put them on the inside. The fiddly bit is trying to get the release paper off the back. The stick it paper is really fine, double sided adhesive, which just means now that I don't have to fuss about with glue trying to put it in. I've just got a complete, a complete sticker. There's a few sort of little hairy fibre bits which is just where the the dye went through the Sizzix a couple of times and there's a couple of little stray stray strands that I'm just rubbing off there. I managed, as I managed to always do, I lost the little dot of the eye despite putting everything into a little pot so that I wouldn't lose the dot of the eye, I still did it. So I've taken the smallest heart from that um, strip heart die to do the little dot for the eye and that's it there's my finished card it doesn't shake as much as a traditional shaker card but i quite like it and it's they stay up as well they don't all drop down to the bottom which i think is a bonus so thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time bye